In this video, I'm going to review a couple questions from each section of the practice test. In section one, we're graphing exponential functions and logarithmic functions, and it's actually pretty similar in the way that we graph these. So for an exponential function here, the first thing we want to do is figure out that the base is 5, so the parent function will be 5 to the x. And then we want to get our parent points. So what we're going to do is we're going to go from x equals negative 1 to 1. When I plug in negative 1, I'll get the reciprocal of the base, which is 1 fifth. When I plug in 0, I'll get 1. And when I plug in 1, I'll get the base 5. And the parent function has a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Then I'll use my transformations. So I'm going to have x minus 1 and y minus 2. I'm going to transform the points here. So I'll get negative 2, negative 1, and 0. And if I subtract 2 here, I'll get about negative 1.8. I'll get negative 1, and I'll get 3. And the horizontal asymptote, if I plug in 0 into y here, I'll get 0 minus 2, which is negative 2, so the horizontal asymptote is y equals negative 2. And then I can graph it. Now with the log function, you still want to locate the base. So the base here is 2, but you want to go all the way back to the grandparent exponential, which in this case would be 2 to the x. And I'll get that parent information again. So negative 1, 0, 1. The reciprocal of the base, plug in 0, I get 1. Plug in 1, I get the actual base. And it's got an HA of y equals 0. Well, now I'm going to go to the parent function, which is the inverse of 2 to the x, which is log base 2 of x. So all I'm going to do is take all this parent information, and I'm going to interchange x and y. So this will become 1 half negative 1, 1, 0, 2, and 1. And instead of having a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0, I'll have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. Because these are inverses of each other, so just transpose the x's and the y's. And then I'll do my transformations of the parent now. So I get x plus 1 and y plus 3. So I'll get 1.5, 2, and 3. And I'll get negative 2, 3, and 4. And because I'm trans forming a vertical asymptote, I'll plug into x, 0 plus 1 is 1, so the vertical asymptote is x equals 1. And if you're looking for the domain range, you can just look at the graph. You'll know that the domain of every exponential function is negative infinity to infinity, and therefore the range of every log function is negative infinity to infinity because they're inverses of each other. In section 2, all we're doing is switching from exponential form to logarithmic form, or logarithmic form to exponential form. In either case, I want to locate the base. So here the base is 3, it's exponential, so I'm going to put it into log, so I'll swing the 3 over. The 2 comes down, and now I get the log of 9 and base 3. Here I'm in log form, so I'm going to go to exponential form, locate that base, which is 9, swing it over, and that's going to move the negative one-half up to the exponent, so I get one-third equals nine to the negative one-half. Here the base is e, and I'm in an exponential, so I'm going to use ln, so I'm going to swing the e over, so I get three to come down, and now I'm not going to use log, I'm going to use ln because the base is e, and I get ln of 19.9 equals three. Here I'm in logarithmic form, ln, so we know that the base is e, I'm going to swing that over, and it pops up the 1.79. In section 3, I am just evaluating each logarithm. You need to be able to do this without a calculator. You also need to know how to do this with a calculator using change of base. But here it's asking 5 to what power is 125, which is going to be 3. This asks 49 to what power is 1 seventh. Well, I can see it's a reciprocal, so I know it's going to be negative. And to get from 49 to 7, I would put 49 to the 1 half power, so negative 1 half. 3 to what power is 1? That's going to be 0. This one you have to know that if there's no base, the base is 10. 10 to what power is 100? That's 2. Now because I have 5 to the log base of 5, because the bases match up, the answer here is just going to be that number. Don't overthink that, 18. Don't overthink this one either. x to what power is x to the 9th? Well, 9. This is saying e to what power is e to the 7th? That's 7. Let's scroll down to section 4 where we're solving exponentials and logs, so we kind of want to feel the yin and the yang here. On an exponential function, if I can get both sides to be the same base, then I can just set their exponents equal to each other. Now I can rewrite 64 as 2 to the 6th power.
So then I can just set the exponents equal to each other since they have the same base. And then I can solve that. Oops. That should be 6. And this is a similar problem, but it's log. Just like here, because I have the same base, I can set the exponents each equal to each other. Because I have the same base here, E and E, because they're LNs, I can just set the insides equal to each other. So feel the yin and the yang of that. Now this next one exponential up here, I can't first I should I gotta I have to isolate the the base. So I'm gonna divide both sides by five and that brings me here. Now since I can't get both bases to be the same number to a power, I'm gonna have to use my logs here. So all I'm gonna do is switch from exponential form to log form. So this is base ten. I'm gonna swing that over. So x equals a log of four. I don't need to write 10 because we know that's the base, and then I could put that in my calculator. Down here, this is very similar, except it's ln. I still have to isolate the ln first, just like I isolated the exponential up here. So down here, I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides, and then divide by 4, and that brings me to the ln of 2x equals 3. And since the base is e, I'm going to switch from log form to exponential form and pop the 3 up. And then I just need to divide by 2. And I get x equals e to the third over 2. Up here we have a special case where this looks like a quadratic, so we're going to use u substitution. I'm going to define u as the middle term e to the x. So here I have u squared minus u minus 6 equals 0. I'm just going to solve this as a quadratic, solve by factoring. What two factors of negative 6 add to negative 1? Negative 2 and 3. And I get u equals 3 and u equals negative 2. Now I'm going to resubstitute back in my e to the x. So e to the x equals 3, and e to the x equals negative 2. Then I'm going to switch these to log form, so I get the x equals the ln of 3. Over here when I switch to log form, I get x equals the ln of negative 2, but we can't take the ln of any number 0 or negative, so this doesn't actually give my, me an answer, and this is the only one. On this problem down here, I have multiple logs, so the first thing I want to do is condense. So when I have addition, it, that's going to show up as multiplication inside the log. So I have the log of x times x plus 15 equals 2. And now I'm going to switch from log form to exponential form. So the base is 10. I'm going to flip that over and get 10 to the second power, which is 100. And at the same time, I'm going to distribute. And then I'm going to solve this as a quadratic. So I'll subtract 100, factor. Now, it's important that you check your answers with log. If I plug my answer back into the original and it causes a negative in any of these logs or zero, then that's an extraneous solution and I have to throw it out. In section 5, we're, we're trying to express these as a single logarithm. We're trying to condense these. So the first thing I want to do is if I have any, any coefficients, I want to put them back up as exponents. Now even though it's a minus, I'm only putting the 3 back up as a positive. So I get the log of z to the third minus log of x to the third plus the log of x plus 1 squared. Now any term with a positive sign in front of it is going to be in the numerator of the condensed log. So here I'll get x plus 1 squared and also the z to the third. And that's traditional to put that in front. And because this is minus here, I'm just, just going to end up in the denominator, and I get x to the third in the denominator. So same thing on this one. I'm going to put the exponents back up. I'm going to leave the negative there, though. So the negative of log base 3 of x squared. Plus, when I put the 1 half back up, you should recognize that's a square root. So I'm just going to kill 2 with 1 here and change it back to a square root. The last one has no exponent to put back up. And now I'm going to condense it into a single log. Anything with a positive in front is going to go in the numerator. So square root of y goes into the numerator. And x minus 7 in the numerator. And because this is negative, x squared will go in the denominator. So when I'm expanding, the first thing I'm going to do is break up multiplications into addition and divisions into subtraction. So I'll get log base 2 of 8 plus log base 2 of x plus log base 2 of y to the third, minus log base 2 of 9. So I should have, uh, next thing I'm going to do is bring down the exponents. And if I can evaluate any of these logs, I should, which I can here. 2 to what power is 8? 3. This has no 
uh, exponent to bring down. Here I'll bring the 3 down. And because I can write 9 as 3 squared, I can bring the 2 down and just make it minus 2 log base 2 of 3. Over here we have the the entire inside to the square root, and that's the same as writing it is just with an exponent of 1 half. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring the 1 half out front, and then I'm going to split it up. So I got the ln of x, and I'm going to go a little quicker here. I'm going to bring the 8 down as well at the same time. And then I'm dividing by 5, so I'm going to subtract the ln of 5. And the last thing you should do is distribute the 1 half, and I get the 1 half of ln of x plus 4 times the ln of y minus 3 minus 1 half ln of 5. Section 7, we're doing interest. So the first one's just asking you to figure out if you invest $10,000 in a 3.6% interest rate, it's compounded monthly. So that's 12 times per month, sorry, 12 times per year. So you're just going to plug into your formulas, just plug into principal, one more zero, times 1 plus r, don't forget to change it to a decimal, don't make it 36%, over how many compounds, monthly is 12, to the nt power, so 12 times how many years, 4 years, and then let's just plug and chug from here. Here we're looking to triple our initial investment, now it really doesn't even matter what our initial investment is, because no matter what it is, we're trying to triple it, so we want the amount in the account to be 3 times as much as what I invested to begin with. Because this is compounded continuously, we're going to use PERT, so e to the rt power, r is, point, is 5.5, .5, so I'm going to change that to 0 0.055, and I'm trying to solve for t. And on this particular problem, all you're doing is solving an exponential equation, so you're going to take the ln of both sides, and then you're going to divide by the 0 0.055 and then you can put that directly into your calculator to figure out approximately how many years it will take to triple. And lastly, in section 8, we're trying to figure out what the new exponential is after it's been moved. So in this particular problem, you can see the asymptote has moved up to. And normally, if it was 2 to the x, it'd be going up like this, so we can see it's been reflected over the y-axis. So my new exponential of this transformation is going to be, let's see, reflected over the y-axis, so on the gate the x, and up to is plus 2. On this particular problem, we can see it's moved down to. It's been reflected over the, over the x-axis this time. And we can also see that it's been shifted to the right too. So if it's reflected over the x-axis, I'm going to negate, negate the outside. It's shifted 2 to the right, so that's going to be x minus 2 up here, and down 2 is minus 2. So there's a look at what's going to be on the test.